But... Let's see what the situation is with the Georgia protest. Which I will remind to everybody that the Georgia protest is about the government trying to push the foreign agent law, which means that any organization, press organization, and other organization that receives any funding from abroad will have to register itself as a foreign agent, which creates many, many restrictions on said um, organization, which apparently is a thing that mirrors a Russian law, a similar Russian law, which has been implemented in Russia years ago. Also, interestingly enough, it mirrors a law that um, Hungary had implemented. And from what I've heard, the backlash against Hungary was so big that Hungary actually had to uh, step back from that law. Hungary actually had to move away from that law, from this sort of foreign agent. I have to maybe, if Karasu will be here next time, I'll maybe I'll sort of ask. From what I've heard, Hungary had to back away from its version of the foreign agent law because of the backlash in the European Union about it. Although, of course, uh, Hungary still found a way to crack down on the free media, so. Let's see if there are any news within the last hour. Georgia is on the brink of revolution. From pandemic to protest, the class of 2024. what let's check out the spectator georgia is on the brink of revolution which a lot of people as i said before have compared um what's happening in georgia to euromaidan which i guess the similarities are that the government trying to crack down on civil rights, civic rights, the citizens not having it and starting a huge protest. Of course, while Euromaidan has led to the president of the crooked regime to flee to Russia, it is still... Uh, it is still not, fi not fully known as to what the results of the Georgian protests will be. The protesters themselves have said many times that without the aid of the West, it will be very difficult for the protests to be successful. And the government itself is cracking down on the protests and is moving ahead to push for uh, the bill to become law. So cracking down with, the, with gas, with violence against the protesters and still moving ahead with uh, sort of voting on the bill to make it to make it to pass it into law so the situation in georgia is actually quite quite tense it's quite extreme for weeks the Rustavelli Avenue in Tbilisi has looked like a battlefield. Thousands of protesters, mostly in their 20s, have been met by riot police armed with tear gas, water cannons, and rubber bullets. On the face of it, the protest is about a new repressive bill in its final reading in the Georgian parliament. In reality, it's the struggle between a government that is turning towards Moscow and a citizenry who by and large believe the future lies with Europe. So that is like the other, um, I guess, similarity that you could draw between this and Euromaidan. 
because Zero Maidan was very much about Yanukovych sort of breaking the promise of wanting, of sort of going ahead with the integration with Europe and suddenly at night switching gears to go towards mm, Moscow. And here sort of Georgia has fairly recently received the status of a candidate for the European Union. And this sort of thing just undermines, sort of cuts the effort of Georgia to become part of the European Union, which, which what all of this is also about, a country trying to get as far away, at least the citizens, the government, not so much. The government is trying to align itself more with Russia, it seems. And the citizens are not having it. The citizens would want to get as far away from Russia as possible, which is understandable for any person that knows what being in the Russian sphere of influence entails. So I guess as a Polish person, I can certainly understand what that means. I understand why the Georgian people would want to move towards the European Union rather than Russia. That is what Poland wanted as well. Poland was very uh, in a hurry to join the European Union as fast as possible and to join NATO as fast as possible, to get away from Russia as far, as far away as possible. The crunch point comes next week when the Georgian parliament will vote on a bill which, if passed, would label as a foreign agent any political or civil society pressure group that received more than 20% of its funding from abroad. The bill replicates a Russian law which allows the Kremlin to hound independent media and opposition voices. Such a law would also dash any hope of Georgia joining the European Union. So yeah, of course, because it would crack down on human rights, you know, it would be a serious um, hamper on democracy. And the European Union is not in the business of uh, states that play with controlled democracy. This week, in reaction to the government's heavy-handed attempts to disperse the protesters, more than 30 members of the European Parliament called on Belarus to withdraw Georgia's EU membership candidate status. See? This is what it's all about. Georgia has the EU membership status and it's just about to lose it because the Georgian government has decided that its fate will not be with the EU but with Russia instead. I guess if you were to be, if you were to go into the offensive realist school, you could say that um, Georgia is attempting to bandwagon with Russia, I guess. Because Russia is, I don't know, threatening the region, so Georgia wants to preempt, preempt it and sort of uh, bandwagon, sort of, to become, to join the Russia sphere of influence. Georgia's president Salam Zorabichvili has vowed to veto the foreign agent bill after the third reading, but the parliament has enough votes to overrule her. If the bill passes, it could mean revolution. Georgia, a country of 4 million people wedged between Turkey and Russia, has already overthrown one leader in its recent history, Eduard Shevardnadze, who was accused of election rigging. That was the Rhodes Revolution in 2003, which put Georgia on a pro-Western path. Russia responded four years later when Moscow-backed separatists seized about 20% of Georgian territory, South Ossetia and Abkhazia have remained under Russian occupation ever since. 
one of Vladimir Putin's so-called frozen conflicts. It does ring familiar, doesn't it? It does ring familiar. When Russian tanks rolled towards Kyiv in 2022, the EU responded to Putin's aggression by opening up paths to membership for Ukraine, Moldova, and Georgia. The EU accepted Georgia as a candidate state last December, although the government had not fulfilled the usual accession criteria. Some 80% of Georgians want their country to join the EU, but Bidzina Ivanishvili, an oligarch who made his money in Russia, former prime minister and leader of the governing Georgian Dream Party, remains the main power broker. Officially, he advocates a third way for Georgia, staying close to Moscow while pursuing EU and NATO membership. But he has never liked the EU's emphasis on curtailing oligarch power, the oligarchization, which is a good thing, by the way. I don't think I have to explain why the de oligarchization is a good thing for a country. Which, of course, will be as well a thing for Ukraine because oligarchs exist in Ukraine as well. And he has played a double game, applying for EU membership to assuage public opinion while making sure Georgia never passes the reforms it needs to be accepted. So it was just a one big hoax, a one big sham, uh, one big smokescreen to just be close to Russia and pretend to want to join the European Union. Georgian Dream, which he founded in 2012, won power in the last three general elections on a pro-EU platform but has been doing its best to annoy Brussels by refusing to join sanctions on Russia and making friendly overtures to China. Beijing has in turn invested more than one billion pounds in highway infrastructure. Pounds? Why pounds? I, I feel dumbfounded for some reason. It's pounds. <laughs> Are they British? Maybe. Maybe this publication is just British. More than one billion pounds in highway infrastructure in Georgia and is planning to build a port in Anaklia on the Black Sea, a strategically important stop on the trade route known as the Middle Corridor. In theory, Georgia wants to join the democratic world. In practice, the government is busy tightening its links with autocracies, which because Georgia probably has ambitions to be an autocracy itself, as evidenced by the foreign agent law. I've actually read the draft for this law. It's, in, it's indeed pretty bad. I think that goes without saying. I don't think I have to... I don't think I'm making some amazing, brilliant observation when I say that this bill is in fact pretty bad. Georgians have noticed this, which is why the governing party's poll ratings have plummeted. But Ivanishvili is prepared to use any means to stay in power. Propaganda, disinformation, the opposition, even alleged vote rigging, and of course violence as of late against the protesters, a lot of violence against the protesters. The proposed new law could open the door to members of any group deemed a foreign agent being denied access to public stations and having no resource to call out foul play in elections, as has happened in Russia. Even now, dozens of Facebook adverts funded by the government are targeting the protesters, portraying them as instigators of a Western-backed revolution and labeling them LGBT propaganda actors. Of course, it all goes back to the LGBT, always. Of course, 
the LGBT is just responsible for all evil in the world, obviously. Obviously, if there is something bad in the world, the LGBT is behind it. That's, that's how it all works. That is how reality works. Amazing. The LGBT propaganda actors. LGBTs are the new Judeo-Bolshevism. I mean, I've listened about... Well, just, just wait for the interview. It's going to be worth it. You're going you're gonna to enjoy the new translated interview that I've done. It has a full... It is good. It has a good, I think, seven minutes on the LGBT. A rant. A seven-minute rant on the LGBT. The best thing about it is when I ask because... I asked a lady during the interview, so is it okay for a man and a woman to kiss in public? And she said, yeah, of course. What's wrong with that? If I want to kiss my husband Mwah. on, on the, you know, near a bus station, what's wrong with that? And then she said she had to go. So I asked the husband, okay, then. So tell me what makes... Um, two men kissing in public abnormal and he didn't know how to answer he had no answer all he could say was well I think it's abnormal and I asked okay what makes it abnormal <laughs> what makes it abnormal well it's just is abnormal oh okay it's abnormal because it's abnormal in other words Okay, let's just continue with the article. That interview was something else. Police have also targeted opposition leaders in the crowds of protesters outside parliament. Levan Kabeishvili, chair of the United National, Mov National Movement, the main opposition party suffered a facial fracture. Meanwhile, Mikhail Saakashvili, former president and leader of the Rose Revolution, remains in prison, viewed as pro-Western rival. See? Like, the leader of the previously successful revolution is now in prison. How things change, don't they? Ivanishvili controls several major TV channels and uses them to push propaganda and slander his opponents. Ivanishvili has also started to promote pro-Moscow conspiracy theories. In, in a rare TV appearance last week, he said that Georgia is being used as a pawn in a confrontation with Russia by a Western global war party. Oh, I've heard the global war. We've discussed this before, the global war party thing. You know? The West, he claimed, wants to open a second anti-Russian front in Georgia, which was why the new law was needed. <laughs> ridiculous. Like that, that's, that is so ridiculous on its face that it's just, I don't know who would believe this other than a totally brain-dead person. Even the Ukrainian government has been accused of preparing a coup in Georgia. Georgian dream vacillate between alleged neutrality regarding the war in Ukraine and open attacks, says Tina Bokuchava, uh, leader of the United National Movement. The truth is that they are betting on a Russian victory. The protesters' strategy is quite straightforward. Georgian dream were forced to withdraw the bill last year because of protests. With Georgia's political opposition dispersed between lots of small parties, these street protests represent the only form of cohesive resistance, although Bokulchava says negotiations to unite the opposition parties have begun. There isn't much time. Parliamentary elections are set for October. Joe Biden's administration has lambasted the foreign agent bill and 14 U.S. senators have sent a warning letter threatening to impose sanctions on politicians who vote for it. Ivanishvili is already scrabbling uh, to secure his global assets before the international sanctions are imposed. 
Parliament has recently passed laws allowing him to do that. Such pressure on the oligarchs can be effective, says Bokul Chava. Ivanishvili has to feel the consequences of adopting that law, while Georgian people need to see that the EU and the US are standing by them. So again, this is all up to Western aid. Again, a situation in which sort of whether or not um, a country will prevail to move towards democracy is depends heavily on how much the democratic countries will be willing to support that effort. She sees Ivanishvili's support for the foreign agent bill as a part of a broader global picture. This is part of a civilizational war that Russia is fighting against Ukraine and the West. Ivanishvili is choosing the wrong side of history and is trying to drag the Georgian people down into that political abyss. But the Georgian people are saying, we are not going down with you. And that mood and that determination can really be felt if you walk the streets of Tbilisi. Yeah, they say we're never again be enslaved by Russia, which again, any country that has ever been enslaved by Russia will understand this sentiment perfectly. The main slogan of the rallies, yes to Europe, no to Russian law, has morphed in recent days to no to Russian law, no to the Russian government. The Rose, Orange and Maidan revolutions were all driven by a sense of democratic optimism, the hope that it is possible to escape from Putin's claws. With Russia pushing back Ukraine's front line, that feels far from certain at present. There is a sense in Tbilisi that time may be running out. The historic movement is now, says Bokuchava. That window of opportunity that exists to join the EU now was not there a couple of years ago. We don't know when that window might open up again. Svitlana Moren or Morenets is a Ukrainian journalist on the staff of The Spectator. Subscribe to her weekly email, Ukraine and Focus, here. So, yeah. We are seeing a case of Georgia believing Russia to be a winner in this and Georgia trying to bandwagon and Georgian citizens just not agreeing to it, just not allowing for such a thing to pass. <laughs> 